Hello, fellow fish nerds, and happy Fry Friday. Um, so I'm currently setting in the process of setting up my classroom fish tanks. Here's one of the 10 gallons here. Um, currently running the um, K1 Caldness uh, Cycling DIY bottles. I'll put a link to that video up here. And uh, this is my old one, old model with the gravel in the bottom as weights to weight down. A newer model made out of Mountain Dew bottle, of course, and a sponge in the bottom. And then the upgraded part of the heater suction cups on the back. Uh, that one's, I, I like that one much better. Um, added some dwarf uh, water lettuce to bring that in to uh, process some of the fish waste and add some uh, oxygen to the water. Um, I've already noticed I finally found where how water lettuce propagates. I don't know if anybody knows this, at least if I have any examples here. I don't say anything, I tore them all off, but on the dwarf water lettuce, there's a be a separate plant that is like attached to the roots right here that you just give it a slight rip and it separates it from, from the main plant. I have a few in the back of this tank as well. There's also a few fry in here with a regular sponge filter in the back. It's not as cloudy as what it looks in the video, but um, anyways, this tank, um, uh, that filter in the back was previously cycled in my a uh, 10 gallon uh, nano fish tank in my downstairs of my house. So this already has bacteria in it, so it's able to be fish ready. And I put them in about a week later and they're doing just fine. Um, the Mountain Dew bottle in the back was also in that same tank. So it has previously been cycled. Um, so that was why it was also fish ready in less than a week. This water bottle is left in my classroom over the summer. So the bacteria that were on it are now dead. So um, it didn't really count very much with that one in the back. I figure it does count. Um, the difficult part with running all three of these off of the you know three-way gang valve here is getting the levels just right so that you have movement of the K1 calmness in both of them. Uh, that one's a bit slower back there. I actually need to turn it up and then to still have bubbles coming out of the sponge filter in the back. So that is pretty uh, Pretty, so the only challenge, I guess, would be easier if I, if I had a stronger air pump. I think that air pump is meant to run like 20 gallons, maybe, and this is right at its its maximum. So that's where the problems I run into. Um, the 20 gallon long here, um, I am just cycling it. Let me turn the light on here. I'll make it better. If the light sort of decides to come on, it is a regular fluorescent light. It should be working here. I don't know why it's not. Yeah, it should be on. What's going on here? Try that again. I don't have to check it out, see what's going on here. But um, I'll probably be putting my German Blue Rams in this tank as their breeding tank. Put in some uh, terracotta pots, put one over here and one over here to give them choice, and put some plants in the middle. That should give it a nice uh, divider. Possibly have two pairs of. German Blue Rams going in here, and um, I would put the uh, Mystery Snails in here because they also like warmer temperatures, but I did notice my German Blue Rams picking at the Mystery Snails, so that's not a an option. Um, I'm really confused why this light's not turning on. It was working earlier today, but I don't know. Let's see here, outlet, that should make it work. Maybe the switch is not working. I'm gonna have to play with it later. But um, anyways, that's what's going on. I have my uh, banana worm and microworm cultures right here. I'm in some more uh, containers ready to go for them. I have to add some too, and then some uh, instant mashed uh, potatoes ready to go. So this is my classroom setup. Um, this is probably where I'll be housing my uh, beta once I get it set up. I'll put the my beta fish back in here, my trained beta. Keep this probably the front of the classroom, maybe. Um, we'll see about that. Uh, and uh, so that, anyways, I plan on adding some more plants to this, and plan on probably bringing my nano fish into uh, one of these two. Probably I'll put the nano fish in here, 
and put all the guppy fry in here. So this, this was the original guppy fry tank. Also with the uh, old snail shell, it does tend to increase the calcium, which is what guppies like, they, so that should make it a little bit better for them. So that's that's my, my plan. We'll see if I stick to it. I need to bring this home. I need to, this is my, what I use to bring the fish back and forth, this or a gallon milk jug, but they're both a gallon, it's a great thing. Um, also good for, I'm wondering about using this as like a nano tank maybe for like nano fish. A few uh, nano fish like some, um, like my, uh, what, what rasboras at home? My uh, Phoenix uh, rasboras at home. So, all right, let me get to my 30 gallon. Uh, sorry for the boring wall here, but here's my 30 gallon with the, my DIY K1 Caldness once again. Uh, cycling filter um, that has I'm pretty impressed with that when it first started off uh, two days ago it just had like a few pieces of the K1 Caldness were actually moving around and now um, as you can see most of them are moving so it means they're now becoming saturated and starting to become kind of covered with the uh, beneficial night frying bacteria um, I made this one last weekend, pretty pretty happy about it. Um, it was definitely easier the second time after the first, the 20 ounce bottle I made. This is a two liter bottle right here. So that's pretty exciting. Um, the sponge filter is a brand new sponge filter right here, meant for 30 gallons. I figure this is obviously the right size. I will be keeping the uh, sponge filter in the tank. The K1 Calmness cycling filter will be temporary, it's just used to get things cycling. I'll get it. In here, once the tank is cycled, I will use the media to cycle other tanks. Um, so that's the plan for that. Uh, it's a nice, basic, cheap light from I think this is from Walmart. I think it's actually the. It is. I think it's a plant and aquarium grow light. It has what, like one piece of dwarf uh, water lettuce in here. I will add some more plants. Just want to get some form of bacteria going in here. Um, I. Haven't quite figured out what I'll put in this tank. Um, I always love the idea of having um, like the quarries on the bottom, just to keep the bottom channel filled, and then some kind of middle fish, which is a lot of them, maybe like tetras or some German blue rams. They're kind of lower middle. And then um, upper level, once I get a cover for this, um, some hatchet fish. I know they jump like crazy, so, but they, it, I think it looks nice, all those layers, or completely just fill it with live bears. Um, this will definitely be a planted tank. I'll have some, hopefully some Val going in the back. Um, some Amazon sword in the corners is what I usually like to do. Maybe put some, uh, definitely put some water spray that grows like crazy all over the place and some uh, wisteria. Uh, some java ferns uh, is a given. I'll put some of that in here. So I think it'll look when it's done. So this is just the cycling phase. I'll start bringing some plants in to help speed up the cycling process. And uh, But my students love to look at this uh, filter back here. The uh, K1 Caldness cycling filter. Um, love to look at it. Love to ask questions about it. And that really, this gets a lot of conversations going. One problem I did run into with this tank was the um, air pump, this is a uh, Tetra 100, um, 100 uh, Whisper, supposedly. Uh, but it's really quiet right now, but you take it out, I don't even hear the difference. I mean, listen to that. You can't really teach with that going on in the background. So I temporarily put it in here on top of the paper towels. Put back on there the right way, and then listen how how quiet it is now. Barely hear it. So then, then once I close this back up, get it, get the cord straight again. Sorry for that. It's like it's not even there. You you can't even hear it. It's in there. Can't hear it. I'm not not even. I'm trying to keep the thing open so it doesn't crimp the cords. Um, and all you hear is the bubbles. So that was my uh, solution. My Eventual solution is going to try to get a, a groove in right there so that the air lines can go through there and they're not obstructed. I can close this all the way. So 
that's the solution. This plug is just going to a light. We're watching a video earlier today in class, so I don't need to have that plugged in right now. Keep it from getting too dark because I don't have any windows. Great for lack of allergy, but bad for, I don't know, sanity purposes. So it, these are my tanks. Hopefully um, you'll uh, stay tuned. So turn on the uh, notifications to see how these tanks uh, progress. Um, this one especially, I plan on making the most changes to, so be sure to uh, stay tuned to this video series. It may not always appear in Fry Friday, but this tank will have the most changes made to it. Um, so be sure to check those out in the future. Um, hope you found this uh, educational, entertaining, informative, enjoyable at all. Please give it a thumbs up. Comment below with any questions or any stocking uh, ideas for this. What should I put in here? Um, Captain Spicy, sorry, no bull sharks. Um, I'm not going to put any Oscars in here, obviously too small for that, for the Oscars. No flower horns. Um, no uh, piranhas, those are not legal in Virginia. So, anyways, let me know what you think I should put in here. I'll open to uh, uh, suggestions. But uh, let me know your thoughts. Uh, turn on notifications, subscribe, give me a comment, give it a share, that'd be great on social media, and uh, stay tuned and stay fishy, people.